Every little bit counts. Capture the rainwater somehow, lots of different ways. The least expensive ways probably are very effective. The idea that we're going to talk about today is how can you take advantage of all of this rain that we have, especially since it's not very much, and you want to take advantage. Why would you do that? Well, for instance, if we didn't have, uh, if we didn't take advantage at this location, none of this, very little of it would be planted because you can't really water this stuff out of the well. So, uh, in order to allow it ourselves to have use for a lot of our property, well, we've gone through the effort of uh, putting in numerous different types of techniques. Get to know your land, where the water's going on that land. For instance, we have a gully that comes down behind the house and used to come straight down here into this little river. The house is here now, so now that flow has been forced to go along the sides of the house. We've steered it such that the majority flows behind, and you'll see where I have two catch basins right in the path of the flow. And when that thing is gushing, I've got two four-inch pipes just pouring water in. Everything we've done here with water catchment off the house can apply to any house, regardless yeah. of your location. Oh, so how water flows on your property. You can see that there's a slant to this land as opposed to being flat. This is the catch basin. Water coming off the canal up yep. here drops down. And there's a box right underneath it. And what is it, just like an, a PVC or ABS pot with the fitting on it? This is the collection pot itself. 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. And on the side of that, it's a four foot hole that the drain pipe connects to and goes down that direction and joins in that pipe that's heading over to the side. And it's a plastic box? They're just called a 12 by 12 or a 9 by 9 catch basin. Here's the water now landing right. here. Our pot's over here, but because I have that rubber, it just all drains back into this. Uh -huh. So the rubber is aiming as a funnel down, oh, I and all the water is going into that. Okay. It is not audible. Oh, here's your collection summer. Okay. So here again, you see the pipe coming in. There's my electricity coming from the, uh, the garage. There's a two-inch pipe with a check valve, and here's the float. When that float comes up, this two-inch pipe, which goes up to the cistern, it fills up. And because of the check valve, it stays full. And I don't want that thing breaking, so I put a little weep hole so the water that's just in that pipe and back up and flow into this tank. So you don't have to winterize it, it just drains down it automatically. It itself. So we're collecting from six different sources here, seven when it, it, you count that, that pond. And there's two more around the back. All of those, again, use gravity feed to get it down into the cistern. The gravity feed here and then the pump gets it to the cistern. A lot of uh, people around here have electric gates, open and close. I use that same device and uh, just put oh. it in. <laughs> yes, it goes 10 foot down, 10 foot wide, and 20 feet long. Wow! <laughs> it's underground swimming pool. Well, let's take a peek. Oh, We're going to start same. walking up this gully right here. This is about two feet. You'll still have flow, it just we're slowing it mm -hmm. so that when it hits here, what was happening, it was coming, it was going that way and it was within six inches of the house. Oops. So we have now redirected it this way and we still captured quite a bit. Yet as soon as we put the mulch on the neighbor above, it cut the flow down to about a third of what it was. So she's now holding water instead of getting rid of water. You know how everyone wants a house on top of the hill? So what she's doing is we're now catching water at the top of the hill. And she's getting prepared after the downturn is over um, to plant more trees up there. But meanwhile, the soil is collecting water, it's decomposing, it's creating a microorganism life. Because a lot of this water catchment is about creating the, the microorganism life that you want in your soil. So it's not dead like this. What kind of mulch did you use? We use the... Uh mulch from the Buckman transfer station. But you're starting to hold water here too, so these yes. trees are going to do better. These trees are going to do better here too. This well, is what the ground used to look like, right here. Uh, we'll go over and you'll see
see some more places where we put mulch down again to try to arrest the water that's been just rushing across here. Because it doesn't seep into the ground very quickly. But if you have a porous medium like the mulch, uh -huh. you can capture a lot of that. What happens here is, as you can see, like Daryl said in the beginning, you watch where the water comes. Now notice the water flow it comes down, it settles here, and because we built a little berm here, it's now watering all these plants during the monsoon season, which reduces the need for us to water them because these are xeric plants. Anything beyond this wall up in here is what I call zone three, which is your native xeric plants. You only water to establish. Once established, you let them alone. We're going to mulch these too. That's going to help. What we did around here, the concept of a swale, that low spot, you can see is forming in this region. Again, it, it's still in process. Whenever you, you plant things, notice berms around the plant itself to help hold whatever moisture uh, kind of runs downhill toward that. These are uh, blackberries. Are you, are you just putting the berm oh. on the downhill side, though? Or uh, mostly, because really you want, if this, yeah. the water's you want the water to fall in it and yeah. stay yeah. in it. When you have an official arroyo, you cannot take water out of it, which means you have to understand where on your property is official or unofficial, or if it is. We found out from our builder right off the bat that this is not an official arroyo. The water that accumulates in this arroyo is not owned by anybody. So we could, in the future, possibly take water out of there. But right now, we just don't have the need because we're capturing so much from our roof and from the back side of the house that we have more water than we are able to store at 15,000 gallons. Every little bit counts. Become aware of how much water you really use.